Hello, flower lovers. I'm Carolyn Ellis. Welcome to Design in Bloom, seasonal flowers for your table and home. I often hear people say, I love flowers. I wish I could arrange them. Design in Bloom is my response. In each episode, I will take you step by step through a flower arrangement, low stress, high success. Thanks for joining me. Let's design some flowers for your table and home. Hello, flower lovers. I'm Carolyn Ellis, and this is Design in Bloom, arranging seasonal flowers for your table and home. I'm so glad you're with me. Today, I'm going to arrange flowers for the December holidays. There are so many days and ways to celebrate this month, and we're going to create a low oval arrangement that will be suitable for any holiday or occasion you can think of. Low stress, high success. That's what we're going for. I'll walk you step by step through this arrangement from container selection until putting in the final blossoms and the final accessories. The container I've chosen for today is this beautiful silver boat. It's actually ceramic, it's watertight, and I love the fact that the ends are pointed because it's much less massive than it would be if it were just a solid rectangle or a large ellipse. I've created a tape grid across the top because that's going to hold my flowers, particularly the initial greens, in place. For mechanics, then, we have the tape grid. There is some water in the bottom. And I'm going to create a stem network with this beautiful foliage. And I'll be placing it through the openings here. And then when it's time to add the flowers, they will stay nice and secure. So I'm going to start by doing that right now. The openings in this tape grid are of a size that will allow these pieces to come through. Not, not too small, not too tight, but give enough support. The balsam fir is beautiful. It's actually a little on the chubby side, and that's great. It has a third dimension that will give a lot of holding power in this stem network. I'll be adding two cedars, a western red cedar and a um, incense cedar. And they, you'll see, have a much flatter ca ca characteristic, much flatter character and they will help us in another piece of setting up the network. So here's the beginning of this arrangement. I'm going for an oval form, but I want this arrangement in the end to seem relaxed. So I'm tucking these pieces in, keeping my geometry in mind, but not letting the geometry actually be a straitjacket. So now we're set with this. Put this fur to the side and move on to the cedar. This western red cedar is lovely too. It's very flat, which is really a contrast to the chubbiness of this fir, and it arches beautifully. So in this container, I'm going to set it in and let it just come down over the edge of the container. We'll call it breaking the edge of the container, softening the impact of all of this silver ceramic. We'll get a really nice proportion to the flowers that I'll be putting in. You can turn this around and let you see from the front side how that's doing. Really nice way to marry the plant material and the container. And again, I love this container, but it would be easy for it to seem a little overpowering. So I'm playing off the flatness and the um, beautiful droop that this plant has naturally. You probably have material in your yard that could be somewhat similar to this. Norway spruce arches beautifully. And even the broadleaf evergreens like Lakothawi will um, arch over very nicely and give you the same effect. So here we have the, rest, the western red cedar. I'm going to take this to the side, and then I have a beautiful incense cedar. I couldn't resist. Wait till you see. It has small yellow cones that um, give a little bit of brightness to the arrangement. And these I'm going to tuck in as well. 
just again giving a little variety, a little more color. Wilson Farm is a great place to buy flowers for your arrangements because they come in bunches of five or ten. So instead of having to buy a mixed bouquet, which of course you can, you can buy roses all of one type, carnations all of one type, Gerbera daisies, and for flower arranging that's really what you're looking for. So here I'm going to stop here with the foliage and move on to the plant material. So to begin again to create the sense of an oval and to reinforce the shape I'm working with, I'm using these beautiful dendrobium orchids. They're snowy, snowy white and they have green tips at the top. The slender stem arches, so that's going to be really helpful for this arrangement. Again, fresh cut. I'm actually going to take some of the tip off. There are just a few too many buds. I don't want this to be too long. There. And to reinforce the sense of the oval, I'm creating two points out here. Let's call it, for me, 9 o'clock and 3 o'clock. And then I'll work to 11 and 1 and 7 and 5 to set up a bit of a framework. Again, I'm going to take off some of this tip. It's a little too long. And let's measure and make this about the same length. We'll try to anyway. You may see me cut more than once. And I do want to say, as with carpentry, you measure twice and cut once because what you take off you can't put back. So if I put something in and estimate and I'm not quite right, then I'm going to take it out and cut it again and put it back in. So here I'm tucking this in and we're letting this tuck in right here, there. So that is just beautiful. It's really nice in an arrangement as well to use flowers in various stages of development from bud to blossom. And dendrobium orchids just give you that right on the same stem as you can see. We have these beautiful buds and we have the snowy white, pure white blossoms. So that makes for a beautiful effect. These are just lovely. Let's try this here. Oh, they're cooperating beautifully today. This is so fun. <laughs> it's so fun. Can't go wrong with beautiful plant material. And this time of year, with all of these beautiful greens that we're able to get, it's just amazing what we can create. One more of these right here. Then I'm going to move on to our focal flower. So this is our line flower, and I'm reinforcing the line of this oval arrangement needs to have a little more support right here, there. Okay, there. Now we're going to move on to these beautiful, beautiful roses right here. These are an off-white rose with a green cast. And again, we're staying very holiday neutral so that this could be used for almost any holiday or any occasion. Someone's birthday, someone's anniversary. I'm going to put these in, and again, I will be reinforcing the general oval shape that I'm looking for. As with so many things in life, it's good to have an idea of where you're going. So the, the oval framework isn't, um, isn't rigid and isn't intended to be a straight jacket, but it is a guide so that I can stay on track here and carry out the plan that I had in mind. So again, putting this here and here, tucking these in around the beautiful orchids and leaving a couple more for use a little bit later. So let's try this. Here we go. These two in together, and two more right here. Make sure I've covered up the rim of this container so well, I just have to really make sure I'm getting the plants in the, um, in the container and not out the edge. So there you can have a good look at that. 
And then again, in this um, very neutral palette for the holidays and for December, I have brought hellebore. You could really almost stop here. Add a few pine cones, fill in with a few more roses, and you'd be done and, and you'd have a beautiful arrangement. But I have this beautiful hellebore, which does grow in the garden here in Lexington. I'm going to add this in. Again, it's in the greeny white palette. The flowers are beautiful, creamy green. Many of you probably have this here in Lexington in your garden. They're a cool weather flower. They love the early spring, and some do okay in the fall. So let's tuck these in. Here. There. They're almost a bridge between a flower and foliage. Look at that. Aren't they pretty? They're so pretty. They are so pretty. Here, we're going to come right over here. And again, make sure I'm actually getting these right inside that beautiful container. With a centerpiece, of course, you want it to have a wow factor as your guests are making their way for cocktails, but when they sit down at the table and they sit at the table for an hour, you want there to be some beautiful things for them to discover in the arrangement, and hellebore is a great flower. Does that job really, really well. It also has a really nice woodland feel. Goes with everything. So there we are. So far, so good, but we're not done yet. This, I'm feeling, is just a little long, so I'm gonna nip the tip of this just a little bit here. Great, okay. So what's next? Now we'll punch it up with these beautiful, beautiful red mini carnations. Look at that burgundy color. They're velvety. They're just saturated. And that's just going to punch this up so, so beautifully. So put these down here. Mini carnations, A, are beautiful, and B, are interesting because they are a multi-stem flower. So you can see there are several buds on each stem. And it's also important to realize, although it's very hard to do, you can cut a multi-stem flower. You can change it. So like the dendrobium orchids, these have several stages of the flower. They have a full flower and they have a bud, which is really, really nice. And I'm cutting these up and just tucking these in as an accent. The dark red color is going to recede and be, um, be a quiet addition but it will definitely bring some beautiful contrast to this arrangement. And burgundy plays well with everything. So now I have such a great stem network that I'm needing to take a minute or two to carefully tuck these flowers in. So again, here is the multi-stem effect, and I can cut these apart and tuck them in. And again, I'm going to trim this. It would be lovely to leave it, but I'm not sure that that outrigger is going to do exactly what I want it to do. So I'm taking it off. There. So we'll tuck a few of these in here. Again, we have to be sure we're getting down into the water. Flowers do drink a lot the first day that they're cut and in an arrangement. So I want to make sure that we check, stick our finger in over the edge of the container and see where the water level is and make sure it's high enough. Let's put a few more of these in. I am liking this very much. They look great. They're so pretty. Let's see. How about right in here? There. I do have a piece of tape on my turntable because even though this is around and in the round arrangement, I like to know where the front is, and sometimes after I've turned the arrangement around enough times, I lose track of where the front was or is or should be. So you'll see me doing that. It's very, it is very helpful, and particularly if you're doing an arrangement that has, it's going to go against a wall, has a back and a front, or a 270 degree, you do want to know where the very front is. Okay, a couple more of these, and then we'll be in very good shape. So we want a form, this oval is, um, is our form and our framework, but as I said, we don't want it really to be a straight jacket. We want it to have a relaxed feeling, and that's what we're achieving here. By using a stem network, you can take the stems in and out without harming anything, and you get a little bit of a loose and free feeling that's really very nice. So right now, what I want to do is add a little sparkle to this. 
We have these beautiful, beautiful silvery, silvery, sticky little branches. And they will add some holiday sparkle and they will bring the silver of the container up into this arrangement. So I'll just tuck these in right here. Just a little bit. When the candles are flickering on the table, they'll, this will catch the light and just give it a little boost. And again, I'm working with my oval framework in mind. So I'm keeping in mind the idea of nine o'clock and three o'clock, these two ends, and then 11 and one, and seven and five, which really helps just to keep straight on where you might be wanting to put things. So look at this, coming alive, coming alive. piece right here. There. Great. Now we've got the sparkle going. So the last thing I'd like to add is an accessory. And that would be, I have two schemes I want to show you. One is these beautiful red berries. They are actually an artificial berry and they'll last forever. Fresh ones are great. There's Hypericum, there's Winterberry, and they're beautiful, but they will wither. These, I love the linear form of them. I love the color and they have this little bit of artificial snow on them, which I just think is delightful. <laughs> Not real snow, but just delightful. So I'm just gonna tuck two pieces of this in here, just for fun, and you can see what that looks like. We could add a lot more. And then I have another little accessory I'd love to show you, which are these beautiful little glass candy canes. And on the other side, I'm gonna tuck those in for a different look. The, um, the little stems on them weren't quite long enough, so I've added bamboo skewers that you would have for cooking kebabs, the skewers you get at the grocery store. And that gives me a little bit longer reach so I can get these down into the arrangement and they'll be very secure. You'll get to see them in just a minute. I'll turn this around so you can take a look. So again, this is a sweet little discovery element for your guests just to say, oh, look what's hiding there, these delightful little candy canes. Beautiful, there. You could be doing a woodsy arrangement with pine cones and soft plaid. So this is the, these are the candy canes right here, just tucked in there so sweetly. Thank you for joining me today. I've had a wonderful time with you arranging these flowers for the December holidays. Beautiful greens, winter green cedar and fir, wonderful flowers in soft greens and cream colors, and then some beautiful red mini carnations. The flowers can be changed out in different colors and different types for different holidays. This arrangement will last through the month if you keep it in water and out of the direct sun. So while you're celebrating with your family, whatever your holiday is, whatever occasions you have, I wish you the best. I look forward to being with you next time we do an episode, and I thank you for being with me today.